Welcome back to the Circle Revival, where today we're going to be taking a look at this M Audio M Track Duo. So, we had some success with the last couple we looked at, so I imagine we're probably going to see a similar fault with this. Uh, so, the listing just said faulty, but I'm wondering based off of the video we had before, which uh, there'll be a card just up here. If you want to check that out, that it's probably got the same fault. So, um, we'll plug it in and see what happens. Yeah, so uh, it's the two red light fault that we had before. So um, we'll get this open and we'll see whether it's the same chip at fault. Okay, so here we are, first of all, just inside the box here. Um, I don't think this has been open before because it was quite stiff to get open, but we're just trying to see if we can spot that same component that we did before. So I found a couple that look like it. There's one just here that could be the same one, but I think what we'll do is, um. We'll just pull the thermal camera out and see where it's getting hot because that worked for us last time. Okay, so here we are with the thermal camera and we can immediately see uh, one or two spots, a couple of spots here getting uh, nice and warm. So um, if we just look around here, yeah, it looks like there's three spots that are hot. So if we get the macro lens on, we can come in. Now this looks like it's probably the chip we're after. This one looks like potentially just a diode. Um, I'm not entirely sure, we'll have a look at that one a bit closer. And then here's uh, the big brains that we had last time that we saw was pulsing before. So uh, I'm going to put my money on this one here to begin with. So what we'll do is we'll bring the microscope around and take a closer look at that. Okay, so here we are under the microscope. And um, if we just tilt this slightly, we can see the code on the chip is SL6SA, which I'm fairly certain is exactly the same. Uh, kind of lettering we had on the last one. Um, if we pull this around, we'll have a look at that other chip that was getting hot. So that's this one here, which are 3C and RK3579 maybe, or maybe an 8. Um, that looks like an 8. I'm not sure what that one is, but what we'll do to begin with is because we have seen historically that this chip here is often a problem, we'll get this one swapped out and see how it goes. So I'll just get this out of the case and then we'll come back on the microscope, get that taken off, get it swapped and then see what happens. Okay, so here we are back under the microscope looking at that chip that was getting hot, which um, was the same as the one last time. It just get the replacements we had. Okay, so here are the replacement chips that we had before. They see SL6SK, so fairly similar writing on them. And they were SGM3204s. So uh, if you're looking for a replacement, that's what you're after. So what we'll do is we'll get some flux on this. And then I'll get my hot air station. And once again, I think I'm just going to heat up from underneath because uh, it's quite a highly populated area. There's um, this cap, uh, cap here and some other bits and I don't want them to go bang. So by going from underneath, it should melt the solder and then I can lift it off. But what I'll do, as I did last time, is I'm just going to add some leaded solder to the legs just to help this come off a bit quicker. Uh, the leaded solder is going to reduce the melting temperature of the solder which should hopefully allow me to get that off before we have any problems with anything else. So I'm just going to come in with some leaded. Got some really shaky hands today. Okay, and then the other side. So there are some bridges on there, but we won't need to worry about those because we're going to lift this off anyway. So it's quite a thick board, so I think I'm going to just stick with my standard temperatures. I think it's set to 460 or something at the moment. I'm not too worried, but I'll just get my decent tweezers. It'll help me lift it up a bit easier. Let's see if I come in from the side here. Yep, yeah, that should be good. And we'll just grab our hot air station. And what I'm going to do is just get one of these new chips out ready and then we'll be all good. If we just look at the board, you can just see here, there's a white spot that represents pin one, and there should be a representing spot on the actual new chip itself. I might just get this out. And then if you just look there, you can see in the top left-hand corner, there is also a spot. 
So that's the direction we're going to put it on, but I'm just going to come underneath then, temperature set to about 460. Um, I'm going to start slightly further away and then work my way a bit closer to the board and then that should stop it from heating up too quickly and then I'll take the old chip off and then put the new chip on. Okay, so there's just some bridges on here, so I'm just going to come in with my soldering iron and just try and clear those up a bit. Okay, that's the bridges cleared up, so I'm just going to take the new chip and I'm just going to place it down roughly in place. Looks good there, and I'm just going to come back into my hot air from underneath, and then hopefully, as the solder melts, that should just start to move into place. And whilst this is still hot, I'm just going to come in with a cotton swab and just start to remove all of this excess flux. Uh, so that went quite smoothly. I think what's quite nice about this is not near everything like the uh, the smaller the Solo M audios are. Um, so it worked just a bit nicer there. Uh, we'll double check those legs. I'm not sure about this top right one here, whether it's uh, quite in place. I'll just get some IPA just to clean this up. Okay, maybe came with the IPA just a bit too quickly. There's still some heat in the board there. But it looked like it went into place pretty well. I'm sure about these uh, legs on the right as well. I'm not sure whether maybe there's just a slight bridge there still. Oh no, as that's cleared up, that looks good. So what we'll do then is if I just come in with my tweezers just on this top leg here, we'll just give it a little nudge. No, that's solid, that's solid. Those three all look solid as well. So we'll give this uh, a go then. We'll plug it in and see whether it's still um, showing two red lights. Okay, I'm just going to let that cool down a bit because there's still a bit of heat in the actual board there. Okay, so the board's had a bit of time to cool down there and uh, I've just popped down to the studio to grab an XLR because I'm kind of hopeful that this is going to work. So we'll try it off with just by plug it in and hopefully we don't see two red lights. Nice, okay, so hopefully that translates. So the two red lights are not there. So let's get this back in the chassis and give it a test. Okay, here we go, all back together again. So hopefully this works. Um, so I'll just plug the XLR in. So I've got here just an XLR. We'll just plug this into the front here. And I've also got just a, an SM7B from the studio as well. So what I'll do is I'll just add a new audio input on here. And what we'll do is we'll just plug this in. So still no two red lights there. So I've just got the XR plugged into the bottom of the SM7B here and I'll just try and see if I get some signal then. So as we raise this up we should hopefully see the signal light there, there we go, so we have the signal light going yellow, or is it green, not entirely sure. So what I will do is I'll just set up the audio on here so that we can switch over and hopefully if all is good you should hear me on the SM7B here. Okay so this here should be the SM7B, so it'll possibly sound a bit different, I might need to just add some filters and stuff to this because I don't have them set up on uh, this mic as I do my actual mic, but that looks to me like this is all sorted, what I'll do is I'll just plug into input 2 just to make sure. Okay, here we are in input two, and also we can see that coming in there. So yeah, this is another fix. Uh, it's good to see. It was uh, a bit disappointing to have a couple of no fixes there. But if we jump back over to the screen, we should be able to make this seven to three. And there we have it. So hopefully it's an interesting one. Um, I don't know why 
I know M Audio not particularly the the most expensive brand as far as it goes from audio, but it seems like they really have cheaped out on these devices for that same component to go. So so far we've had three in a row there, all with a similar fault, all coming from that same component. If anyone knows what that component does, uh, let me know because it'd be interesting to find out. But if not, it's good to have another win. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.